Grace and peace, everybody. We're back. This is going to be another one of the one and done series. I'm just going to record this and we're going to put it out there. I don't know how Target is going to resolve this issue. So earlier this year, Target had the issue with pride and kids clothing, so on and so forth. They really took a took one on the chin. <laughs> now they're back again. But this is it. They're actually being too woke. And the woke are upset that Target is so woke. Let me explain to you. Let's pull this in. Target. Target is slammed for selling inappropriate ghetto gastro breakfast food range. But its founders say critics are missing the point and they're using food as a weapon to make an impact in our community. All right. This one's going to be good. Let's go. Target has been slammed for selling a woke and inappropriate fruit brand, while its founders say critics are missing the point. All right. Well, let's see what the point is that we're missing, because this one seems pretty, uh, well, it seems pretty straightforward. <laughs> let's go. Social media users rounded on the store after announcing. Make sure y'all can see that correctly. Okay. Yeah. After announcing last month, it would start selling ghetto gastro products. The New York City brand founded by Bronx native John Gray, Lester Walker, and Pierre Soriero in 2012 markets itself as food for freedom, fuel for thought. Okay, pretty interesting. Let's keep going. But some took issue with the use of the word ghetto and the black power message plastered on its packaging. It is not the first time Target has been criticized this year, having been attacked for selling tuck-friendly women's bathing suits in July. So here's the packaging. Ghetto Gastro, Black Power Kitchen, and here are some of their items. Their, their breakfast items, which is interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into those. But yeah, this is wild. Social media users are exper expressing outrage and confusion over a brand of breakfast food sold by a company called Ghetto Gastro, which according to its founders, aims to use food as a weapon to make an impact in our community. So these are the brothers that are uh, preparing this. The brand was founded by Bronx Native. We already went through that. Food for freedom, fuel for thought. All right. Target seems to have lost their dog on minds, wrote a Twitter user <laughs> upon seeing a photo of the products at one location. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a no for me. Ghetto Gastro is a repulsive name and a product on various for a product on various different levels, wrote another. So again, Target's trying to be woke and actually they're too woke. Look at that. Yeah, I'm sorry. One Twitter account compared it to Target's previous backlash for selling rainbow themed apparel. When the market, when the marketing department decides pride displays are passe, I can't get your blank together. Target added another. Not everyone ha was negative with one Twitter user angry that the brand's intention was getting lost in translation. In this thread, white people being offended on the behalf of black people, the target is sto uh, stocking products from black owned business. I, I don't even understand. I just think it looks terrible, but whatever. One that after pursuing their site, perusing rather their site, I can't wait to order from once from once products like the matcha pancake mix are back in stock. Another simply wanted to know the most important question involving the food, asking, but is it good? A user who goes by the name Tribe on Twitter put the brand's toaster pastry side by side with generic Pop-Tarts and came away disappointed. Those new Pop-Tarts with all the race card marketing at Target are not only double the price, but half the amount. They're also more calories. I don't know about that one. Hold on. Let me see. Because I saw the picture. All right, so here's the picture right here. Uh, so they got Pop-Tarts. They got pancake batter. 
as well as syrups. Okay. Yeah, I just don't get why ghetto gastro. Okay, so here's the here's the label right here. They're also more calories. I don't know how is he saying more calories? It it says one serving of the their pop tarts are two ten. One serving of regular pop tarts are three seventy. I don't know how that person came up with that. I don't I don't think that's a good now it definitely looks like there's fewer in here though for sure. But yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's a good one. The creators explained in a Target press release the name was meant to take the idea of where we're from to create something special and reinvent the vernacular. I, I, okay, I have no idea how you take the word ghetto and gastro and reinvent those, but okay. They claim ghetto implies resilience and innovation and creativity it means home and the gastro signifies our intention to revolutionize your plate in thoughtful ways okay that's really that's a that's a reach <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know how one would come away with that reading ghetto gastro so when i read this right here i'm supposed to get resilience and home and reinvigorating your plate. Why don't you just call it the plate revolution or or righteous revolution or something like that? Why, why, why not? Yeah, this seems like, okay. Does, I mean, as much as we try to sanitize the term ghetto, it's not gotten better. It hasn't gotten a, a facelift. His PR team is not doing a good job. All right, let's keep going. The group has released a ghetto gastro cookbook and called Black Power Kitchen, which came out to a critical acclaim and mentions in the likes of Vogue in 2022. Okay. According to the website, the aim is to use ancestral ingredients and use food as a weapon to make an impact in the community. Okay. We want to provide more nutritional benefits to communities like ours that have been neglected or systematically engineered to have bad food. Co-founder John Gray told The Root, you know what? I can actually support getting good food into neighborhoods and communities that don't have good food sources. I'm actually for that. I don't know if processed breakfast food is the jam. And I don't, yeah, I don't know if Processed breakfast food is that way to do that. But I can support that. I can absolutely get down with that. We want to create content that penetrates the psyche, that shows people what's good for them without being preachy. So ghetto gastro is not preachy. Okay. All right. If, if, if Okay. Ghetto gastro is not preachy. But, okay. That's, um, okay. Okay. I'm going to just take your word for it, man. In June, Target got caught in a wave of protest protests against corporate support of political causes when they caught backlash for selling Pride merchandise, which that, that happened for sure. Um, Target lost $14 billion in market, market value since it was revealed that the chain was selling tuck-friendly women's bathing suits. Amazing. Uh, amazing. And it's, it doesn't seem like they've learned a lesson. And in my opinion, to the point that I'm making here, it seems like they're still getting hammered. So they, they keep doing the same thing that got them in this situation. It comes to Stephen Miller's America First Legal is demanding Target turn over all corporate books and records detailing the promotion of the Alphabet community products and its decline in market value. In response, over 200 Alphabet groups are demanding Target restock its controversial Pride merchandise and take a stand against extremists within 24 hours. So, again, you can't be woke enough. So, Target is not going to be woke enough. They've already <laughs> capitulated, and now they can't capitulate enough. It is what it is. The Human Rights Campaign, along with GLAD and a controversial 
and the controversial GLSEN released statements Monday asking the retailer giant to and other businesses, including Bud Light, Brewery, Anheuser-Busch, to reject and speak out against the anti-alphabet community extremism going into Pride Month. Well, that was that was earlier. All right, and that was the end of it. Yeah, that was the end of it. Yikes. Uh, so they have some, um, on the Instagram, them kind of like throwing items into people's carts telling people that to you know they don't even know what they're getting they're just putting it in their cart which is kind of interesting i don't know if that's a good uh tactic here is their um they have an instagram account and um yeah i don't know if that's a strategy for success i don't know if that's an avenue for success but it is what it is um yeah so here the young men are so here's the young men are on their um, uh, Instagram. Yeah, I, I mean, the it might actually be good. I don't know. I would kind of be interested just for the sake of discussion to try something out just to say whether or not it was good or bad. But besides that, like the name, just, the name just doesn't do anything to me. And it does seem like it. I can see why it causes problems, not only with people that are white. I guarantee you, if there's the only people that are going to be buying this in droves are going to be white liberals who feel like they're going to be supporting the cause. Those are the only people that are going to be buying this in droves. Black folk are not going to be buying this in droves, especially if it's twice as much as regular breakfast stuff. I mean, they, they have syrup, pancakes, and Pop-Tarts. I, I Again, I, I don't see how this is going to ultimately help a community that maybe maybe give or take maybe really doesn't have good food choices which i think that that conversation should be had about whether or not communities that are predominantly poor maybe predominantly minor minority why they don't have good food choices i think that could that conversation could be had because it's multifaceted it's not just one solution there's not just one answer but i don't know if this one is it it just seems like it's antagonizing the situation way more than it's trying to solve a problem and you you properly identified an issue that hey there's certain communities that don't have good food choices I, okay i agree that that is a problem but the idea the notion that of well what we're going to do is we're going to make these breakfast items or we're going to give them an edgy name and that's what's going to promote it out there i don't know if that's going to be it but hey, you know what? I, you know, I, I salute you for trying. I salute you for acknowledging that there is a problem that needs a multifaceted, multi-solution, um, multi-solution. Um, I'm saying uh, a multi-item solution. Absolutely, I think that is smart and it's such like that. But the idea of just selling pastries as breakfast stuff, I, I don't know a lot of people that even eat breakfast nowadays i mean yeah i mean but you only have cereal like to me cereal would have been a much more breakfast friendly pancakes and pop tarts okay i, I just don't know if that that's going to net you the result that you ultimately thought you were going to get by doing that i don't know but um it's interesting though man hey god bless you man hope y'all uh i hope y'all keep trudging through and i hope you're willing to adjust your marketing and adjust your name as necessary to be more inviting, to be more, um, to be more entreating. Because at the end of the day, if, if you niche down to only the people that are understand gastro, ghetto gastro as a marketing name. Now, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. But hey, I hope it works out for y'all, man. So I want to thank you so much for checking out this video. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Put a stamp on it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you eat breakfast? Do you eat breakfast in the morning? And what do you generally eat? If I eat breakfast, it's usually bacon and eggs. But what, like, what do you usually eat for breakfast? I'd love to know down in the comments. Let's talk about it, and I'll see you all there. Grace and peace. We're out.